A quick primer on formal verification for Maximize. Formal verification methods have got the roots in theorem proving, property checking, and equivalence checking. Let's talk about property checking, more popularly known as assertion-based verification and has its roots in model checking. So what is property checking? As opposed to checking with explicit traces of zeros and ones, which is what happens intuitively in dynamic simulation, property checking takes the view of verifying the designs exhaustively by using mathematical techniques. And why is this necessary? Because as the state space increases and as designs become more complex, we just cannot afford to verify designs only by using simulation. Imagine a 64-bit design, it has got 18.446 quintillion explicit combinations of test cases to test. It is just not possible. So how does property checking work? Before we get into the details of how it works, let's understand where it comes from. So humans have been using logic for thousands of years, and logic is the foundation of property checking and formal verification. So if you want to understand how logic works, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. We are all used to this kind of reasoning. And this is exactly how logic is used in formal verification and property checking in particular. Modern day formal, however, dates back to about nearly 70 years ago when Dijkstra famously coined this phrase that testing shows the presence, not the absence of bugs. The idea of building a proof was at the heart of formal and has always been since. If you want to go into the history of formal verification, I wrote a blog on Tech Design Forum uh, and you're welcome to take a look at it. Properties. Properties capture requirements, they're mathematically precise, and they express time-based behavior. For example, if you want to talk about an interrupt in a processor, you could say that an interrupt is high for two cycles, but not consecutively. Or you could say that a request is followed by a grant. So it is very convenient to use the language of formal properties to express complex time-based behavior. It is an automated technology. In property checking, we specify requirements using mathematically precise specification languages such as PSL and system value log assertions. They can be used to capture requirements and they express more often what rather than how. They're declarative in nature and they describe the input output behavior of a design. When it is specified like this, then a mathematical verification algorithm automatically proves if that specification holds on the design. If it cannot prove, it can actually trigger a failure, showing you the bugs in the design and by pulling up failing waveforms. Let's dive a little deeper into the world of property checking. It all starts with the specification, which can be used to design an implementation. For example, a Verilog program describing how a design is going to work, or it could be a VHDL or a system C program. The same specification is used to describe constraints, assertions, and covers, the three pillars of property checking. Whereas constraints describe the environmental conditions under which the design is physically going to work and in which it is going to be verified in formal, assertions describe what needs to hold of the design at all time points. So for example, all requests going into the design must be followed by a grant X many cycles later. This could be an assertion. Covers on the other hand, describe a scenario where we may want to say that every request is followed by a grant. Okay, that is an assertion. And in the cover sense, we could say, is it possible to see a grant at all in response to a request? And covers and assertions are ways to find bugs. Now, these assertions and covers and constraints are written, as I said, using system better log assertions or PSL, and they are then synthesized when they go into a formal verification tool along with the design, and the tool produces one of the three outcomes. 
It either says that the properties are valid on the design on all possible states that are reachable in the design model, or there was a problem, meaning there is a bug in the design. Or it is an unknown, which means you've run out of time or you've run out of compute power. So let's take a look at our formal cockpit more closely. So what happens on a pass? Well, it could mean that you have an exhaustive proof of correctness. That is great. But you have to check that the design is of required configuration. We want to make sure that we do not end up checking configurations that are too small for the design. There are no bad constraints in properties and no bad constraints in the design. Two areas where you could introduce constraints. See, with You've got to ask yourself a question. Were you really expecting an exhaustive proof? Okay, so then what happens on a fail? So there could be a bug in the design, or actually there could be a bug in the formalization of the design intent. There could be a bug in the understanding of what the intent really is. Missing constraint in specifying the legal values on the inputs. With formal ESC, stimulus is free. So you need to ban the legal stimulus. Otherwise, you get a lot of spurious failures. Not very productive. But what happens on an unknown? One of the many reasons why formal verification has had a checkered history of adoption is people don't know how to cope with unknowns. We need to work a little harder. So we employ abstractions. They could take a form of cut pointing. They could take a form of black boxing or even more advanced abstractions. We may need to use invariants, assume guarantee flows, induction methods. We may need to employ coverage techniques to understand the scope of what is being verified and why it hasn't converged with respect to the design. Effectively, you need the whole cockpit and the whole cockpit of tools. In our training, we focus on all of these aspects extensively, going into a lot of detail in how to apply these techniques in a tool independent way, in a problem solving like manner. So in short, formal methods is rooted in theorem proving, model checking and equivalence checking. And if you want to know a little bit more, please come and contact us. We have been training lots of engineers in the last few years and we'll be happy to make you a pro in no time.